Man, it got all greasy. Poking the oil on me. How's everybody doing this morning, man? Shout out to the five of you that are in here so far. Hope everybody is having a good morning. Johnny, what's going on? Adam, what is going on? Mystical, good morning. Prudence, good morning. How y'all doing? Hope everybody's doing good. On this hump day. Mike, what's going on, man? Oh, uh, <clears throat> Mike, if you get a chance, inbox me on uh, on Instagram. Giancarlo, what's going on, brother? How you doing? Looks like it's going to be a decent day today, man. Uh, no rain scheduled. Looks like it's going to be in the 80s, so got me a little free time. Actually didn't have that bad of a night at work, so I think I'm uh, think I'm going to have me a pretty decent day. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm supposed to be coming over today to finish up a little bit of painting on the house, but uh, just kind of wanted to show y'all what I had going on. I'm going to be smoking me in a row of Yamastron today. This is the 1118. I don't know if y'all can see it. So you see how, like, where this second band is, it gets kind of fat? So this style of, or you can maybe see it even better, like horizontally, you'll see here how it's fat. That's, uh, that's, that size is trademarked by Christian Aroa. That's the 1118. So you'll see like old Davidoffs and stuff that'll, they'll look like a regular Toro and then they'll get fat. That's, uh, that's Christian Aroa stuff. Matt, what's going on, man? Shout out to you and the UK. Gonna light up the sweet grass gringo shortly. I haven't had that. You have to let me know how that is. Yeah, Prudence, I'm glad you finally caught you in morning live. You got to work today or are you going to be uh, chilling? You joining the Gurkha Town Hall tonight? No, nah, I ain't joining it, bull, man. I uh, I don't, I mean, even though I, you guys know the Gurkhas that I think are not uh, bad cigars, but that's not going to affect me. I don't put, I don't really put money in their pocket anyway. They make terrible cigars for them to have as much money and backing as they do. But Matt, what's going on, man? You stay safe in the gym, man. What uh, what you got going? What body parts you working today? Yeah, I like this one, Mystical. This is pretty good. It's, and then, you know, like I said, it's I don't even know if you, it's. I just like uh, odd shapes too. So we'll go ahead and uh, light it up and smoke it. Sir Walt, what is going on, brother? Oh, prudence. All right. Well, hopefully uh, everything will be better for you the rest of the day. I'm sure it will be. But uh, make sure you're driving safe. Don't be speed. <laughs> so you got the uh, the dress paper there for the, the cigar. You'll be able to see it a little bit better now that the wrapper's not on. You see how it's fat there. But I always thought that. Was... See, the CLE Connecticut's have an 1118 size too. And so when I didn't know about that size, I bought it. And I was looking at it. I was like, man. What the, the roller must have been drunk or something, man. But then I looked at more and did a little bit of reading and found out that was Christian in a roller shape. So another question, man. Uh, smoking my favorite right now, Cuban Punch Punch. I uh, I got to get some of those, man. Uh, I'll be showing y'all what I got here in a little bit. Money for Tuna uh, package finally came probably two months later. But uh, some other people asked me about that too, man. It's been ordering for Money for Tuna. And, and I was just telling them, your stuff's going to come, man. You just... You just got to be patient. Some uh, Just be patient, man. That stuff's coming. And then and you got to think about it, too. These are websites that are really reputable, and a lot of uh, people are co-signing them. If something happens, even like with well, Havana's after a month or so, you'll get a refund back. So uh, don't worry about them uh, screwing you over or anything like that. But I also wanted to show this, too. I found one of these. So uh, I have a gunmetal one that's still not around either. Somebody asked me the other day, uh, if I'm not using matches or the Jeep lighters, what's my favorite lighter to use? And this is it here. This is the uh, Zycar EX windproof lighter. This is my favorite uh, lighter. And it still has the soft flame. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like a hybrid. It's like a torch and a flame. But this is my favorite favorite lighter or expensive lighter. They run about $60, I think, retail somewhere in there. Uh, I'm going to be hitting the chest and see. Yeah, that's that's my day there. I like chest shoulders. It's uh, it is from Kerr Viajante. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I found out about him. I'm sure probably you too. I found out about him through uh, Kevin at Cigar Prop. I have to, I, uh, to be honest, I haven't checked out any of any content or anything or uh, know anything else other anything else about him other than 
Kevin speaking on him, so I have to check him out. I think he has a, a YouTube channel too, so I have to uh, see what he has going on. Waiting for Monty Fortuna since March 28th. I'm not worried though. Yeah, uh, honestly, Giancarlo is it June. Let me see. I'll actually tell y'all when when they uh, inbox me about that. Just just to show y'all I'm not bullshitting. Uh, let me see. They uh, April sixteenth is when they April sixteenth is when they initially talked to me about the sampler, and then they mailed it uh, April twenty fourth. April, May. so yeah, a month and a half. So I was, I knew it was coming. I wouldn't even worry. I honestly, to be honest with you, I forgot that it was coming in. I looked at the box and looked at the name, and I was like, man, I don't know anybody with that name. And then I opened it up and I was like, oh, okay, it makes sense. So, uh, Jerome, what's going on? But uh, before I light this up, I'll show you guys what I got. So, this is from their, uh, I want to say, I don't want to get anything confused either. I think this is another level three uh, sampler pack. So we'll let y'all know. Jerome, you working today, man? Are you off? What's going on? I'll be doing some filming today, too. I'll be uh, be reviewing the, the older version of the Year of the Rat, so the 2016. And then I'll be reviewing. I still haven't decided. I'm either going to do the League of 10th Anniversary or the um, maybe the UFO 4. I know I'm going to do the 2016 Year of the Red. I'm just not sure what the second cigar I'll review today. Workflow. Workflow is slow, so I'm able to watch now. Cool. Cool, man. Uh, One package came from Swiss. The one I'm waiting on is coming from Spain. I think the one – I didn't look at it, too. I think the one I had was coming from Spain, but but uh, let me see. I'll let y'all know what the sample of this one is. Looking on their uh, website, huh? But yeah, I had a had a pretty good night, man. So no complaints. I was worried I wasn't gonna get any sleep. All right, so this is the Cuban Cigar Starter Sampler Three. This uh, this retails for seventy five dollars. As you guys know, if you order anything from Monte Fortuna, if your order is over one hundred and fifty dollars, shipping will be free. So if you're just buying this sampler, you're gonna have to pay for the shipping. Just uh, FYI. So it comes with five cigars. Looks like I got one different than the picture, but it's all good. All right, so the first one is going to be a Partigas Series D number five. As you guys know, I've reviewed the Series D number four already, one of my favorite cigars. Or, sorry, the uh, D6. I love the D4, too. I like the uh, Partigas Series D lineup. They're, uh, they're good, pretty good. All right, next we got the El Rey uh, Del Mundo. I think this is the Choice Supreme, I want to say. So y'all see that one there? Next, we got a Ramon Alonez. Looks like especially selected. I have a lot, quite a few of these and stashed away in my personal humidor. These are really good, especially once they got a little bit of age on them. But the, the Ramon Alonez, I like these a lot. Really good cigar. Okay, yeah. So the uh, Partigas Series D number five is a fifty ring gauge. You know they do millimeters in in Cuban cigars, so I don't have the the uh, translations right now. So the Partigas Series D number five is a fifty ring gauge by one twenty four millimeter. The El Rey Mundo Choice Supreme is a forty eight ring gauge forty eight ring gauge by one twenty seven millimeter. Ramon Alone is specially selected fifty ring gauge by one twenty four millimeter. And then uh, let's see. The, uh, I'm looking at the La Flor de Cano. This is the uh, edition or exclusive up for Spain. 52 ring gauge by 110 millimeter. I'm mean, actually really excited about this. I've never had any cigars from this line, so I'd be excited to uh, try this. I've talked to a few guys that smoke a lot of Cubans. They said the uh, the regionals for La Flor de Cano are good, but the regular production stuff not that great, so we'll see. Yeah, uh, Matt, I actually haven't had the Choice Supreme either, so I'm, that's why I was really excited about this sampler. The only ones I've had are the – I actually haven't had the D5. I've had D4, D6, So, uh, but I'm pretty sure the flavor profile of the 5 is going to be pretty similar, so it's almost like having it. But the Choice Supreme and the La Florida Cano, I was uh, really excited about. This next one is a De Rafael Gonzalez 
And so it looks like they missed. I didn't get the uh, Oya de Monterey, Oya du Prince, which is a 40 ring gauge by 130. But it looks like they substituted with this. So it's a pretty small cigar, as y'all see. Not a very big cigar at all. But these are the five that I'll be reviewing at some point. You guys know I got the uh, Drew Estate sample or series going on, so I'll be scattering in Cuban cigars and other stuff in the middle of that, too. Uh, yeah, Goose, this is the Monte Fortuna sampler. This is the starter sampler number three. So this one retails for $75. They have a version that is uh, $50, and then they have one that is $30. This one is the stage three. I'm not looking forward to the whole dealership experience, but you got to do it. Yeah, man. You stay safe out there, man. I'll uh, holler at you later, Giancarlo. So that is the uh, sample pack from Monte Fortuna. So these will go in the humidor for a little bit until I decide to figure them out. I probably will do the same thing. I feel like particles do really well without having a lot of age on them, so that'll probably be the first cigar I end up smoking, and then I'll probably do the Ramon Alonez and then uh, work my way back. Probably do it because this cigar here, it's not like I'm telling you guys, it's not a big cigar. So this is my lighter. And that's it's not that much bigger than the ring gauge is really small too. So it's not gonna take that long to smoke that cigar. That'll that'll probably be maybe a 30 minute smoke for me. And it's trying to baby it. But um so that's what I got. So that was a nice surprise to uh come home to this morning, man. After having a having a pretty good night. Be, and then uh, keep in mind, too, man, with these Cubans, you want to be really careful moving them around and stuff. Their wrappers aren't as, uh, usually as thick as the New World stuff. So if you drop them and bang them around, they're going to crack on you, man. So just be careful with it. But uh, Mystical, are you still in the chat? Are you working today, too, man? Are you off? Or are you working from home? Bruce, what's going on, brother? Good morning. Just want to say thanks for the tip on Black Line. Everything you said, fast service, and even matched the price for me. I'm telling you guys, man, because people will come in my comments, oh, what about such and such and such? I'm like, that's cool, man, but uh, I'm not really, a, I'm not, I mean, other than Neptune, I'm not really a big uh, big website buyer, man. I don't, I don't really order from, I'm not going to say names because I don't want to, uh, but y'all know the big name people, man. I don't really order from them. And, uh, like I said, Black Line is, is just, you guys are seeing it from Bruce too, completely unbiased opinion. And uh, like I said, they got fast and he, fast customer service, fast shipping, and he's going to match prices if he sees what, if you, if you just prove to him that well, that's where you see it from, he's going to match it. So for me, I feel like I would much rather help out the smaller guy rather than to help out the giant. So uh, let's see. That's it. Yeah, uh, Jerome, I'm going to have to baby this one, man. I'm going to have to baby that if I smoke that one. Into, uh... Okay, mystical, cool, man. Yes, they are, Jerome. They are. They uh, they have started that. I think their first uh, official launch is going to be in July. Mystical, I think I already signed up for it. Oya Epic here, number two, with the nice coffee in the morning. Hits the spot. That is a definitely a good combo. That is a that's a that's a classic combination there. Uh, Epic here, too, with some nice coffee. That's That's it. Bruce, I'm telling you, man, see, and that's what I was telling people, too. So and I, and I talked to James about this, too. People remember stuff like that. And as long, and so I'll, I, I told one of my good friends at work, I told him the word for the day this year is consistent or this year is consistency. Just be consistent. Same thing I told Johnson, man, you're consistent. You put out a good service. You had a good product. People are going to stay there. So now look, probably now. And that's why I've even said in that live stream. Bruce will probably still shop at other spots and do other stuff, but Black Line is always going to be on his in his head now because the customer service was good, and if something's not right, he's going to fix it. Prudence, uh, uh, no, it, I'm going to be honest with you. In this Cuban sampler, I think you'd be fine with any of these. I think you'd be just fine with any of these. Uh, Cubans, to me, aren't very strong. At the, mo at the most, you'll get some that'll get into the medium area, but none of them, is, none of them are going to knock you out like New World cigars, like nothing like your La Florida Dominicana's Padron, uh, anything uh, Espinosa, that's it's not going to be like that. Jerome and they treated me well. They're going to treat y'all good. My guy with the sneakers, what is good, man? Good morning. Appreciate you pulling up and appreciate the donation, man. Also, want to give a uh, shout out to my two newest Patreons, man. The Smoking Preacher joined up on Patreon, and then my brother E Man uh, joined up on Patreon, too. I really appreciate you guys for supporting. Like I'm telling y'all, man. 
uh, y'all think I'm y'all think it's going crazy now. I'm finna finna kick it in the overdrive, man. I uh, I thought I was gonna be able to take me a little break after Cigar Madness, but not what I'm gonna do, man. I'm uh I'm gonna keep pushing forward. I got some stuff I got to get out, and uh, a lot of good cigars are getting ready to release too. So I got to keep my foot on the gas. So that's what I'm gonna do, man. But uh, with the sneakers, I appreciate you, man. Yep, signed up with B.L. Going to hit James with a special edition. Warp comes out, too. He's going to have all it, man. They got their hands on all this stuff, dude. They, how long does it take from an order to delivery from money to Fortuna? Uh, Gooch, normally I've had two samplers that have come to me. Uh, the first one took about two weeks, and as this one, as y'all saw, it took this one about a month and a half, about six, uh, yeah, about six, seven weeks. But, but, you know, the virus is going on now, too, so that's slowing down anything. that Anything that has to do with customs is going to be slowed down a little bit. Yep, same here. Yeah, yeah, man. I And then Nova's had dealings with Black Line, too, man. There's a lot of people in here that can co-sign it. Oh, man, happy birthday, man. What you going to smoke today? Shout out to Nova, man. Happy birthday to you, man. Hopefully you smoke you something good, man. Don't smoke any Gurkhas, man. Michael, what's going on, man? Good morning. Chaz, what's going on, brother? As y'all see, I have this thing turned down pretty low, and it's not scorching. This is a lighter wrapper, but it's not scorching the bottom of the foot, man. It's just nothing worse than seeing somebody light a cigar, and they got char marks and stuff all up the side, and then they'll smoke it and be like, man, I don't really taste nothing. It tastes burnt. Well, no shit. Take your time, man. Cigar smoking is for patient people. Yeah, big shout out to Nova, man. Big shout out to Nova. Yeah, Prudence, I think you'll really enjoy it. I think you'll enjoy them. Have you had any Cuban cigars before? <clears throat> if you haven't, I mean, I don't have one, so it's hard to recommend something I don't have, but enough enough people that I trust uh, uh, co-sign on the perfect draw, so I don't know if that's a tool that you have, Prudence, but if you start dabbling with Cuban cigars, you end up liking them. <clears throat> that's something that you may want to look into. I still have to order one too. What like what's going on, brother? How you doing this morning? Uh, Ron, have you ever smoked a Cuban Monte Cristo too petite? I have not smoked a petite version. I've just smoked the full size version, and I'm a really big fan of it. Um, I don't know if you saw Johnny. The uh, I smoked it twice during the Cigar Madness tournament. One time was really really good. The other time it was still good, but the first one it set the bar so high that it just wasn't as good as that first one. Really, really good. Uh, these are Aroa makes really good cigars too. That's a cigar. That's another brand. So I've told you guys before, Aroa uh, at JRE that produces Aladino cigars. There's a couple others, man. Like I think they're often quite overlooked. And uh, another one that Aroa makes, the CLE Connecticut, which I believe Lee Mac is going to do a video on for his uh, beginner series. That's a cigar that if you're just starting out and you're just trying to figure out flavor notes and your palate and stuff like that. That's another really good uh, cigar. As, as I said, well, it ain't terrible, but it's, it got on there a little bit. Even had the flame down low and still got a little bit. Good smoke production already, y'all see. So it's a pretty good cigar. I don't think it's that cheap, but probably end up reviewing this at some point. I wanted to order a box of money Cristo too from Fortuna, but all they have is petite. Uh, Johnny, man, I don't know if you have any experience with iHavana. That's another really good site too. I think they uh they have uh, full size twos, but you know the uh, the petite two might not be bad. So that might be one of the things I would probably, if you could, if you can afford it, get you a box of uh, fools and petites. <clears throat> Compare them if they seem like they're pretty similar, except the petite's just a uh, cut down version of it. That might be something that's good for you when you're in the car or, you know, you don't have a lot of time, but you still want to get you a good cigar in. 
So I would, I, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to smoking a petite, uh, petite number two. Yeah, that's what made me want to find a box from you having it. So, yeah, it was a really good cigar. I got I to gotta order me a box too, John. Oh, okay. Prudence, you do have, okay. I'm just going, I mean, you've been, you've been supporting me for a while too. Thank you. Uh, shout out to Prudence. Shout out to Terry. <clears throat> shout out to uh, my, my girl, Janae. Got quite a few sisters of the Leafs that are always, always supportive, always come in. I really appreciate you. Uh, I know we've already had this talk in a previous live before, but I know when I started the channel, like that was there were some age groups or some demographics that I was like, I don't even know how I'm going to reach out to them. But then I just kind of boiled down to like, I just I'm just going to I'm just going to stay and be who I am and, you know, hope for the best, man. So, uh, but I, I definitely wanted some sisters, of, sisters of the leaf involved in the channel too. I feel like I've seen some channels where, well, I feel like sometimes they feel like, which is nothing wrong with them sticking together. But I, I, I'm, I'm really happy that uh, I have some sisters of the leaf over here. City, what's going on, man? Yeah, I'm enjoying you having an ice Joe in the farm road. That's what's up, man. I'm glad you uh, made it to your Friday, man. You be safe out there, and it sounds like you're enjoying a good cigar. Good cup of coffee. Trey Willie, what is going on? Latori, what is going on? Shout out to all y'all, man. What are your thoughts on the Placencia Reserve 1898 again? I liked it. Uh, I only had it in that smaller ring gauge, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So uh, I enjoyed it enough to try to – I'm going to try to find a box of those somehow. It's a European-only release unless it's an event-only cigar over in the States. But um, – I'm uh, I'm interested in buying a box of those. I like those. I like that one. I like the original Reserva, the one that has uh, or has or all organic tobacco. Um, I like the Alma del Campo, and I like the Alma Fuerte. The Alma del Fuego and the Cosation 146 are the two that I'm not really that crazy about. But the other ones I thought were pretty good. But uh, yeah, Prudence, what I was uh, mentioning too, I completely forgot. So just if you don't have experience with Cuban cigars, but you've seen them in my videos and stuff too, like the reason why I mentioned the perfect draw is just uh, be mindful. It's, I haven't had any problems recently, which knock on wood, like it's been, I haven't had to use any, any tools or pull anything out, but Cuban, sometimes that quality control is bad and it'll frustrate you if you grab a Cuban, sometimes you'll cut it and the draw is not good, but I'm, I'm already, uh, I'm already, we're already touching in agreeance that you're going to have a good experience with me. Robert, what's going on, man? Good morning to you. I'm doing pretty good, man. Smoking me in a row of Yamastron. Pretty good cigar, man. Pre especially for the morning. Really good. Yeah, Johnny, uh, I Havana's and Monte Fortuna are two sites that I think are, are very legit. I order from them quite often. And Monty, Fort Monty Fortuna is the one that sends me samplers to review. So I don't think that they want to put their name on the line dealing with fake cigars and me reviewing them. <clears throat> because if I ever did find out they were fake, then I would let you guys know. But they're, in my experience, I've had some Monte for or I've had some Cohibas and some Monte Cristos, which are two of the easier ones to, even though they're the mo two of the more popular counterfeited cigars, they're uh, very easy to kind of uh, legit check and they've been fine. So those are two sites I. I would even put my name behind both of those sites as far as being legit. Uh, this the ring gauge on this one is uh, shit, man. Let me give me the line. I'm gonna say, but it's kind of weird. It uh, Sydney has you see how like I was showing them earlier. You see how in the middle it gets kind of fat, like right in here. This is this size is known as an eleven eighteen. But let me look up uh, the specifics and see what they say. Only ever had one Cuban was a Romeo and Julieta, good flavor. Yeah, when they're aged, when they're aged good, they, the flavor on the uh, on the uh, Cubans are really good. It's just a strength for me. But a lot of times in the morning or something like that, I still like them. Donald, good morning, man. Ron, real hope you having a uh, good morning. It's a blessed man. I have to tell you, your uncle Lee Mac, he's my man. He's funny. I mean, yeah, he is funny. That's a, he's a good dude, man. We need a uh, review from you of that cigar. All right, I'm gonna make that happen, man. I've got you if you wouldn't mind a gift. Yeah, uh, Latori, uh, uh, are you following me on Instagram? If not, uh, let me know if you're not, and I'll send you my email. We, we could talk more. I like that line I haven't had in a while. Yeah, Rowan makes good stuff. I smoked the first 20 yesterday at work. Phenomenal cigar. Another cigar, like if you like dark flavors, chocolate, 
Uh, that that first twenty, that's one of the few six six by sixties I recommend too. It's box press, but it's really good. Oh man, good liking, but anyway, oh man, smoking money, Christo number four. Kev, what's going on, man? And seeing you in about a week or so. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, Lee Mac does have a great show. I'm. It's been. I was texting him the other, the other day. I said, man, three days in a row of Lee Mac. I like that, man. The mom, what's going on, brother, man? Yeah, yeah, that charter oak is, is that the charter oak that you got from the sampler, or that's just one you just had already? David, what's going on? Good morning. I appreciate that, man. I'm I'm glad you're enjoying it. I'm I'm glad you're enjoying the channel. I'm uh I'm glad to be here, man. It's uh it's, it's been good. I've been enjoying this five by fifty. Let's see, okay, cool. I checked them out. Yeah, Johnny, I I, I co-signed them, man. I think those two sites you'll be fine. Uh, Titus, what's going on? Good morning. Been watching for a month, and I'm thoroughly enjoying your videos. I'm smoking the Monte Cristo White series right now. Good morning to you too, man. I hope you're enjoying that Monte Cristo White. That's another cigar that I always will recommend for people if they're just starting out. And uh, that's that's like one of the few Monte Cristos I still to this day will enjoy every now and then in the morning. Donald, the weather's good, man. It looked like it was kind of overcast at first, but looks like we're gonna be around 80 degrees today. Got a nice day planned. You know, I'm probably gonna smoke me about six of these today, so. Got me a little off time. I don't have to pick up my son until about 4.30 or 5. So I got, I've got i got pretty much a full day to kind of relax. Need to try to get some stuff done around the house. And uh, I think me and Eric are, are going to film later. I'm going to review the 2016 Year of the Red. And I haven't decided if I'm going to do the UF4 or I might do the Pancetta. I'm not sure. Or no, I might do the Liga 10. That's probably what I'll do. I'll review the Year of the Red from 2016, and then I'll review the Liga 10th anniversary. Found your channel from your Cohiba Siglo One review. Great reviews. Keep them coming. John, I appreciate that, man. Uh, I don't know if you just tuned in. I got another package from Monty Fortuna to do more, to review more Cubans. So I have a uh, El Rey de Mundo, another part of Serie D, a Ramon Alonez, a La Florida Cano, and a, a Rafael Gonzalez, it looks like. So I'll be reviewing more Cuban cigars, too. But um, – that's, and that's another thing that I really felt was really important for me, too. Uh, I know other reviewers review Cuban cigars. It might not be as frequently, but, you know, uh, I wanted some people that don't live in the States to, re to, or to recognize or to, to acknowledge that there are smokers in the States. that Because I feel like a lot of times cigar smokers in the States don't get enough recognition or that we only smoke New World cigars or a lot of us don't appreciate Cuban cigars. And that's just for me, I don't feel like it's true. So that's why I feel like it's really important for good, credible people, good, credible reviewers to review Cuban cigars and give them a good buy, unbiased opinion. And uh, just to, and that's, that's great. Like for me, I feel like I've been in contact with a lot of people from the United Kingdom. Um, talked to uh, my buddy Joel over in Australia, some people in Brazil. So it's nice to get uh, people that are around more Cubans to, to kind of co-sign the reviews too and let me know that I'm doing Doing a service to the cigar, so that's really uh that's really cool, man. Chesapeake, Virginia. If I retire, that's I'm going to the Atlantic or the Gulf. I'm that's either probably do South Carolina or uh Pensacola, Florida, something like that. Man, I gotta I gotta get towards some water when I retire. That's gonna be a while though. But Prudence, I'm glad you do. I think he's I think he's a he's my favorite reviewer. Um Personality wise, he's got everything covered. He just, I just like I like people that I feel like I can relate to sometimes. And I know you guys can see it, too. Sometimes you'll watch a reviewer and they'll be a good reviewer. But sometimes they kind of, you know, you can just tell that they're just kind of up on the pedestal. And it's like, I don't even know if I see him in person, if I speak to him, if they would even say anything back to me. So I almost feel like I always want to be that person that, that I just I'm just a regular dude. So if anybody ever runs into me, I don't want them to ever feel like they can't speak to me or or if they inbox me a question, I'm not going to answer it or nothing like that. I, I I hate that, man. I hate that Hollywood shit. So that League of Ten is crazy good. I'm We're going to see. We're going to see. Lee Mack is definitely one of the top channels on YouTube for sure. We got to help him get to 10,000 too, man. He's, uh, he's about 150 away. We got to get him to 10,000 before the summer's over with. That's a that's a personal goal of mine. I want to help him get to ten thousand. Tampa, Florida, in here. What's going on, man? I gotta get back to Tampa, man. It's been a long time. What's going on? Partner out there painting my house. Uh, this cigar is pretty good, Mike. This is a good one. Good cigar. 
Kevin, man, you can't, man. I'm that's why I say I'm, I'm trying to work on my Spanish, man. You got to, man, so, or anybody in the uh chat that speaks Spanish, y'all got to translate for Kevin so I can talk to my guy, man. Who is your favorite reviewer to watch? Uh, Lee Mack and then Smoking Preacher, those are my two favorite reviewers. Uh, retire on TV Island, Joy, or yeah, great price. Okay, Charles, I'll look into that, man. Alex, what's going on, brother? How you doing? It's another, another up and coming reviewer. If you guys aren't following Alex Seminoles Dwight, make sure you check him out, man. Like I was mentioning in my community tab, I mentioned him and Ashhead Cigar Junkie. Um, we, we as the cigar community, we got to support each other, man, and uh, help keep these people motivated because the more people you have reviewing cigars, the more, the more alleys or outlets you have for information. There might be something I, we might review the same cigar. There might be some information that I forget out, forget about. That Alex or Ash had may mention, or there may be a backstory that they know that I don't know. So everybody brings something different or have the, has their own style. So we need to be sure to support that community, man. I always try to, especially channels that are smaller than mine, I always try to uh, help them out as much as possible. But Alex is another guy I watch, Smoking Preacher, Ash Head, Cigar Junkie, Smoking Lead, uh, Cigar Show Tim just started. He just split from Dad Smoking Cigars and did his, he's doing his own channel now. So that's another reviewer that you guys are going to want to uh, check out. Fentez, what's going on, brother? Better late than never. PK, Compton in the house. Shout out to Compton, man. And be safe out there, brother. Alfonso, what's going on? I'm glad you're appreciating it, man. I'm enjoying the uh, – I love you guys loving the show, man. That's another one of my sisters of the leaf, Latanya, too, man. She's always been, been super supportive, and I like Latanya, too. I, I have never met her, but – I know that all I can tell already she's a very genuine person. And uh, another very important thing I could tell from Latonya, she has a mind of her own, which I'm very big on. Think for yourself. It's not, not following trends. So uh, shout out to you, Latonya. Are you working this morning? I like them both. Yeah, Smoking Preacher and Lee May, like I said, Smoking Preacher is just funny as hell, man. Feels like uh, you, my dog. Feels like I've known you for a while, man. For real, I appreciate that, Sydney, man. Like I said, um, appreciate all the all the love you guys have been giving me, man. It's it's uh, doesn't go unnoticed, and uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be here for a while. So so don't worry about me going anywhere. I ain't going nowhere. I'll be here for a while. My year anniversary will be coming up September 16th. Y'all already know I'm gonna probably plan this. I'm gonna smoke a big big daddy cigar, man, and review that. I probably I probably will drop that re uh, review on. My one year anniversary, and uh, man, we'll we'll see we'll see what we got. Okay, you working? Okay, you'd be good. It'd be safe or stay safe, stay safe out there. Good content, and I can relate. So that's thanks for being down to earth. But yeah, man, it's uh, it's this all I know how to be, man. It's just me. Um, I don't feel like I'm that interesting of a person. I feel like I do most of the same stuff every day. Work, you know, take care, of, take care of my son, smoke cigars, might drink every now and then. But that's cool, man. Like I said, with so much stuff, there's all the stuff that's going out right now, going on right now. Like I'm at home a lot. I don't really get out too much, which is uh, fine by me as long as I got a good cigar, peace and quiet. Like I'm, I'm good. This is um. This has some cream to it. I'm not gonna say a super a super creamy cigar, but definitely good cedar notes, good black pepper. Uh, I'm gonna give I'm gonna pour me a cup of black coffee here in a minute. But this is very good. You guys see the performance on this thing is really good. And uh, I was supposed to be looking up eyes for y'all too. Y'all had to pardon me for that. Padron Family Reserve number forty four, Cohiba Talisman Special Edition, two thousand seventeen. Um, I haven't smoked a smoked a Talisman two thousand seventeen. That's a cigar that I'm kind of chasing after to uh, at least smoke once. Uh, Padron Family Reserve 44. I like all the Family Reserve stuff. There's not a Family Reserve cigar I don't like, so I would I would recommend that Padron. And um, I don't I don't know. It depends on what you want to spend too. Are you paying for them? Or somebody's gifting you the cigars? Because if somebody was gifting me the cigar, I would go with the Cohiba Talisman because it's more expensive and the opportunities for you to get that cigar are going to be harder. You can find that Padron Family Reserve 44 pretty fairly easy without searching too hard. So that's why I would go with it. Man, it's 43 of y'all here at 9 o'clock in the morning, man. I really appreciate that. I just looked up and saw how many people in here. Y'all be sure to hit that thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever y'all want to hit. <laughs> All right, let me look up the size on this uh, cigar, man. Let 
Let me see what we got. Yeah, this is this is a uh, pretty good cigar. I, I enjoy this. I don't think I would buy a box, but um, I think I, this I think this is five pack worthy. Or if you want to grab one or two, I think that'd be good. All right, so the eleven eighteen. This is a six and a fourth by fifty two ring gauge. A single is fifteen dollars, and a box of eighteen is two hundred sixty six dollars. Like I say I don't. I wouldn't buy a box. I'd buy maybe three to five and have them in the humidor. But I think it's a good cigar. Now, if this was ten or twelve dollars, I probably would buy a box. Or if I could find a good deal on it, I'd grab a box. I have the opportunity to buy both of them, and both are around fifty euros. So, let's see. Pardon me, man. Y'all know I'm doing my translation. Fifty six, fifty seven dollars. Uh that's pretty good because I think a box of talismans. I think it comes in ten. Let me see. That's like let me. I'm gonna tell you now how much a box of talismans cost. <laughs> yeah, Latonya, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever y'all hit, man. Just be sure to hit some if you in here. Kevin, that means you too, man. Uh, favorite Lancero. Oh man, probably either. Hmm. Probably the Tatawahe Black Labels there. Uh, El Wawense by Foundation Lancero. Uh, man. Hmm. Uh, the the uh, Laranja Oscuro Lancero is really good. Uh, damn. The Oliva V is a good one. That's quite a few. Probably the Tatawahe Black Label or the... Uh, so El will win, say Lancero. All right, uh, look up this talisman and tell you how much a box of them costs. Uh, Latonya, I'm smoking the Aroa uh, Yamastron. This is the 1118. It has that. It has. I was showing. It has that weird size. So you see in the middle here how it's bulging out. So it's it's pretty regular the rest of the way, but in the middle it gets kind of fat. Which I don't know why he designed it. Unless it's for like most people hold their cigars there, and it maybe I'm not even gonna say that. That's gonna sound questionable, but. Uh, a box, I'm looking at Cohiba Talismans right now. A box of 10 will run you $725. So if I'm looking at that, so it's 725 So if you could buy for $56, $57, I would say buy that cigar if you can confirm that it's a real cigar. Because like I said, Cohiba's one of those, Cohiba's, the Hikes are brands that don't have to go on sale because people are going to buy those cigars. There's enough, there's enough attention to the Cuban community where they're going to they're gonna buy this stuff. I have my dark roast with s'mores, roast coffee going with a Siri D number five and a Don and Don started this today. Yeah, man. I uh I want to smoke that part of your Siri D2. I gotta review it though, man. But uh you're gonna have to let me know how you're enjoying it. I'm sure you post you a picture too. I want to see that combo. Brother Woods, what is going on, man? Shout out to the double R Army, man. My guy Woods in here. Amadel Fuego has a good Lancero. See, I haven't tried that one because I didn't like uh didn't like the Robusto and the Toro. So I'll have to uh, smoke that Panatella. I hear that's the best one, but it's like, man, for $16. And then I already don't like the flavor profile of the other two. So uh, where can I get a deal on some L45 packs? Holla at Black Line. I'm serious, Sydney. Black Line. And you can use my – or uh, talk to him, figure out what you're going to uh, charge, and then uh, you can use this, uh, use this code to get 10% off. I'm uh I just typed in the chat. Use that code, Sydney, if you order from Black Line, it'll get you 10% off too. I have another question though. Can a cigar over age? I mean, when you store a Cuban cigar, for example, for 10 to 15 years, will it uh, lose its taste? Most of the time, Cubans are gonna be fine with aging because their fermentation process and, and how they so and their fermentation process is different than New World cigars. And then when they roll them, they are immediately packaging them and shipping them out. So if you get a cigar from Nicaragua, Honduras, Dominican Republic, Dominican Republic, most of the time after that cigar is aged, it's going to sit in the age room anywhere from six months to a year. So it already have a little bit of age on it. Um, so I would say for Cubans, for the most part, they're going to be fine if you're aging them pretty long. New World stuff can overage, believe it or not. I've had a lot of New World cigars that they'll hit their peak around three or four years. And after that, they'll start going down. Like I was telling the story. 
I bought a box of Tata Whitehead Michaels, a dress box that was signed by Pete Johnson. So when I first smoked the cigar, it was just average to me. But I bought it because the box was signed by Pete Johnson. I was like, all right, cool. I might sell it on down the road. Well, y'all know me, man. I ended up opening that box and I was like, to hell that I'll smoke them. So I smoked it and it tastes like paper. It got worse. So I had to smoke and give away cigars really quick because it the time was not helping that cigar. So yes, cigars can't overage. I appreciate that, Kevin, man. Love you too, man. But yeah, uh, LOL forever. That's that they can't operate. I'm gonna tell you another good cigar that does really good. Another new new world lineup that does really good with aging is Illusion. That's a cigar company that their cigars are already really good immediately. But th like those are cigars that you could sit on. Casa Fernandez or AKA Aganorsa Leaf. Those cigars usually age really well. And I think that so that's crazy too because all right. So think about this. Good morning, Tom. How you doing? So Aganorsa and probably Aroa stuff will age really well, too. So I've told you guys in that last live, the, the C's, the, the Corojo 99 and the, Coro, the Criojo 98 are the two most similar uh, tobacco C's that taste similar or are uh, similar to Cuban tobacco. So the first C's that came from Cuba went to Honduras. And then Aganorsa over time has got those. So if you notice Aganorsa, uh, they focus on Corojo 99 and Criojo 98, the Cuban style. So I feel like that may come into play why that tobacco ages really well, as opposed to Brazilian tobacco or Connecticut broadleaf, Pennsylvania broadleaf, Cameroon, Habano, Indonesian. That stuff may be different. And the regions are a little closer than, you know, Connecticut is far. Longitude latitude is way farther north. Like you have Cuba and Nicaragua and Honduras are, are below it, but not too much farther, you know. Yeah, Aroa stuff does do really well. Uh, Aroa CLE, Aganorsa, Illusion. I'm sure Warped Age as well too. Actually, I have had some. I had a Maestro D Del Tiempo or D Tiempo, and it, it was really old and it was very good. I just watched a video about aging cigars. It says after time they lose flavor if they sit too long. Watched on Paderno YouTube channel. It depends. I don't. That's not law though. That's not law. I, I think they have a very good channel, and, and Nick and those guys over there they're very knowledgeable, but. I don't think you can corner that in and say they they all age or they all don't age well because I've had cigars. I've sat on boxes for I've had cigars that I've sat on for three years and they were they were really good immediately. And three years later, they were really they were better. And then I picked up cigars from B&M's and cellophane were so cloudy and the cigars were. I have a box of Casa Fernandez from 2011 right now. And they are fantastic. They have not lost anything. If not, I think they've gotten better. RMJ, what's going on, man? Shout out to you in Virginia, too. Big Cal, what's going on? It, it is, man. Like I said, that, and that's why I said everybody's going to have their opinions on it. That's why I said nothing is concrete, man. You can't. Nothing's concrete. But they do have a really nice channel over there. Their production is very strong. Uh, they've, they've commented on a couple of videos, so I think they they watch some stuff I do, too, which is kind of cool that uh, somebody that big is is – it's probably some social media person, but still, it's still cool, though. Chris Floyd, what's going on, brother? Uh, Chris Charles, the thicker the leaves, such as the Maduro-type leaves, age and hold up better than the thinner leaves generally. Yeah. I just think that with Aganorsa having their focus on that, because you think about it, they don't really dabble with a lot. You'll look at, like, look at, like, Drew Estate, for example. They're dealing with so many, like, in their blends, there's so many different tobaccos. Where most of the time with Aganorsa or Aroa, they're dealing with Corojo or Criojo, you know. Um, that or uh, like now Aroa may dabble with different rappers more than Aganorsa, but Aganorsa is very Corojo ninety nine and Criojo ninety eight dominant. Like that's their bread and butter. What you thinking, Floyd? What you thinking, Chris? You liking that Casa Fernandez? What are you running your humidor at? Do you have separate? Excuse me, separate setups for Cuban and non Cubans. Uh, I run my humidor around sixty two. Relative humidity and probably my temps running around 70. I don't start getting worried until my hum my humidity gets up about 67, 68, which still is fine for people. Most people will like them at that. I like my stuff really cool, man. I like I like my cigars cool. 
Um, and I did have a separate sub for non-Cubans and Cubans, but I don't now. They all are just in, in cool door together. I check my Cubans, my boxes probably once a month, look through, make sure everything's fine. Okay, is that Nick Padermo's the Phyllis? Because I don't know, so Latonia, I don't know if it's him or his son. You know, his son is social, on social media too. Anything related to Cuban history and Asian? And Ron E. Lee is the go to source. Okay, I, I see what you're saying. All right, Kevin, you take care, man. Be safe out there today. What's your opinion on Arturo Fuente Hemingway short story? Have you smoked it? Yeah, that's a really good cigar. I like the Hemingway. I don't think they're super complex, but I think the flavor profile is nice. And it's, uh, uh, that's why I say, like, they, they market perfectly, though, man. Like I said, they got the market corner with Open Six, but I think the Inyeho line, the Hemingway is very good. They do other stuff like the God of Fire. Um, they have some other stuff, too. I, I like the, I like the short story, though. It's a good cigar. Yeah, Chris, man, I, I like, uh, I had a Casa Fernandez, uh, Miami Anniversario. Lancero the other day. Fan. That was my first time smoking the Lancero. It was really, really good, man. Really good. Oh, wow. It makes me think I had my humidity too high. I keep mine at 69, 70. It depends on where you live at, though, Tom. So think about it. I live in Memphis. It gets very hot here, and it gets very humid. So I can't run my stuff at 70, 71, because then I'm pressing on it. I've had them where I bought them out of B&Ms before. The, the, so you'll, and you'll know, you'll know if it's too high for you. So when you smoke it, your flavors will get all washed out and nasty and the burn will be terrible, man. You'll have to keep if you're not outside, at least for me, if I can tell if something's wrong, if I'm indoors and I have to relight and do a lot of touch ups. It's, it's, for me, that cigar is nine times out of ten way too humid. So I like my stuff really cool. I like mine around and I don't even mind if it gets as low as 60. Okay, again, that's why I tell you guys invest in good sharp cutters, because sometimes if you get around 60, it can get a little dry, and if you got a shitty cutter, man, and you, you're not cutting real clean, and Chris, you'll crack that wrapper. So I always make sure make sure you got you a good cutter, man. Misco, I was uh, you. I don't if, I don't know if you were in the chat earlier, but I mentioned this lighter. This is my favorite uh, fancy lighter. This uh, Zycar EX windproof. I think you like this lighter, man. I think you should. You need to check that out. They run about fifty, sixty dollars. I mix my new world with Cubans in the same humid have no. Yeah, I, I do the same. I was kind of like that at first. Two Matt, I had them separate, but then I was like, you know what, man? So I have a, the bottom part of my cooler door. All the Cubans are at the bottom, but they're, they're sitting in the same with my New World stuff, too. Haven't had any issues either because the Cubans are in their own separate boxes. There's there's nothing mingling or anything, so they, they're fine. I was thinking I may have been too high also, but I maintained a 67 relative to me. No, nah, you should be fine, uh, Big Cal. You should be good. Tell me about the Cloud Hopper 485. I just bought a box rolling with Agonor Brother. Cloud Hopper is a very good budget friendly cigar for anybody in the chat. Uh, Walt's asking about the Cloud Hopper. You can find them for about $6 a cigar somewhere in there. They come in two different sizes. Very good flavor on it. Uh, I think it's a nice, very complex, little short cigar. Uh, I'm picking up a lot of it's been. I think the last time I smoked one, Walt, I was in Tuscaloosa in March. I smoked two. I was there for a week. I smoked two during that week and remember really, really enjoying those. Those to me too smoke really good at a cool attempt. I think you're gonna be really, really pleased with it too. And that's a good cigar to give anybody. If you got a friend that comes over that doesn't smoke that much, but you want to give them a good cigar, maybe if you don't have anything infused or anything like that, that uh that cloud that cloud hopper is really good. I'm gonna buy me a box as well too, Walt. Yeah, the XO cutters, that's that's my favorite cutter. I bought another I, I haven't been using it as much, but I bought me another one too. Because Black Line was running a uh a sale on, so I went ahead and grabbed me another one. Uh, what do you think is the best cheap daily smoke? Need something for the bloody box. Uh, what I mean, as far as everyday smoke, like what's the budget going to be? Are you trying to stay under five dollars a cigar? Are you trying to stay under six? Are you trying to stay under three? It just depends. Because every, everybody's cheap is going to be different. Like for me, a daily smoker for me is something that's five or six dollars. So I would recommend the Warriors by Crown Heads, Henry Clay Warhawk, Punch Knuckle Buster. Uh, Illusion, Rothschild, and Connecticut or Maduro. Those are all going to be in that 5 to $7 range. But for me, I feel like that's a daily smoke for me. You could get cheaper like the factory smokes, Oliva round, stuff like that. I don't, I don't really smoke technically bundled cigars. But uh, the War is and uh, Charter Oak is another good one. But I think, I think the Punch Knuckle Buster, you like that one. That one is about 4 or $5 a cigar, depending on what size you get. Big Cav, I got to get to Ebor City, man. I heard nothing but good things about that one. 
a lot of B&Ms are opening here and the cigars weren't well maintained well during the shutdown. Been disappointed with the few selections I made this week. Yeah, that always sucks. The good thing about the one I have here was is uh, if I if I'm if I'm there, if, especially if I'm sitting in the lounge and smoking and it's cracking up on me or not performing well, I could just take it up there. Let me walk in the humidor and grab another one. Yeah, Latonya, it, it depends on where you're at because some places are really hot. Like Arizona out there is hot and dry. It's humid here. It's gonna be humid in Florida, uh, humid in like Savannah, Georgia, places like that. Then you get up north in like Ohio. Pennsylvania, it gets cold up there, so it, it just depends. I'm glad to hear that, Miss. I think it's a, I think it's a great, fan, I think it's a fantastic cigar. My brother Sanai, what's going on, man? How do you feel about the hundred point rating system now that you have been reviewing for a while? I don't add a cigar to my smoke list unless you score a ninety or higher, but I wonder if I'm missing out. Uh, honestly, Sanai, I'm a, uh, it depends. So. Because think about this. So for me, I put 90 or above, I consider an elite cigar. We all aren't going to smoke elite cigars every day. And that's why I would say, honestly, if I'm scoring anything over 85 and up, I say that that's, that's fine to smoke. And then it depends on your flavor profile, too. So, like, I may score something to 86, but that's not me saying it's a bad cigar. I may just say it's average. Now, you may smoke the cigar and it may be an 89 or a 90. So I would say, honestly, I would say anything I'm scoring, at, everything I've put on the channel, I would smoke other than. The Padilla, Finest Hour, Sun Grown, and the Daughters of the Wind by Cass Dagley. Everything else, I think for the most part, anything that was in that Cigar Madness tournament, even if it didn't score a 90, I would smoke it. The Espinosa, La Ronja Oscuro, the My Father, Libby Jew, 1922. Uh, any, anything, I don't, and that's why I was telling you, that's for, and that, for that very reason, Sanai, that's why I don't put certain cigars on my channel. I'm only reviewing cigars. Now, unless I'm smoking something like this stuff in this Drew Estate series, I don't have uh, pork bellies and pancettas and stuff just laying around, but I, you know, I know I know the makeup of the profile of that cigar. But um, any anything I put put on my channel, these are cigars I smoke. Like even anything I'm smoking on these live streams, like I said, right now off the top of my head, this is probably an 87 or 88. It's not an elite cigar, but it's very good. So I would say like smoke this because you might smoke it and really really enjoy it. Yeah, Walt man, James is James is solid. Man. He's always helping. Uh, the mall under five dollars. Look up the uh, punch knuckle buster. Punch knuckle buster. And then I'm gonna be honest with you guys too. Uh, Y'all, that's why I said black line. You really got to catch them, man. Um, they were promote. I, I think they may be out of them now, but they had a really good deal on the Crown Hill Warriors where it was gonna be under five dollars a cigar. But just read MSRP and to try to get some quality for that. Look up that punch knuckle buster. Yeah, when you smoke that, you'll know better too. Like I, I think it's a really, it's a good, it's a good serviceable everyday cigar. Yep, and it's and the short story is a good everyday cigar too. Punch egg roll is a good one, but it's hard to find those. That's the only problem. Libby Jew is a good, uh, great cigar. Smoke uh, Larange Espinosa. Did you smoke the original Larange with the orange band, or did you smoke the uh, white band, the Escuro? I think both of them are good, but. Keep mine between 63 and 67 since it is so humid here in South Florida. I'm sure, Adam, is, you probably haven't had any problems because I haven't heard you mention anything. Yeah, so now any, anything I'm scoring probably 85 and up, I would say go ahead and smoke and try it. Uh, archetypes, sacred scales, 90 plus for sure. <laughs> All right, uh, Tom. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to check that one out, man. I, the other ones I had, I wasn't huge on, but I actually, it's funny. I was looking at uh, a live stream or something the other day and somebody mentioned that very cigar. No, I think it was Cigar Prop. He was mentioned, or he was uh, interviewing the Bakersfield gentleman, and they mentioned the Sacred Scales. So I'm gonna have to check that out. Oh yeah, it was I? Damn, I, I forgot about the uh, Kivari. Yeah, look up the K Kivari series too. Those are good. Those are really good. Matt, what's going on? Good morning, man. Really enjoying these live smoke sessions. Sorry if you answered these a thousand times before, but was uh, what was it initially got you into smoking cigar? I don't, I don't care about answering stuff a thousand times because I can't be an asshole like that because there's people that may not have watched all the live streams. There, there are people that are new, uh, new subscribers. So I, I, that's fine. I understand that people uh, ask questions. So it's cool, man. Um, got me into cigars. I was at a friend's house in 2015. Uh, one of my best friends was smoking the cigar they all were smoking, and he asked me, did I want one? They were smoking. Uh, he smoked a Macanudo Maduro, and I got one in and uh, really enjoyed it, and that's what got me into cigars. 
Just a uh, good. He still smokes cigars to this day. To this day, too. The original one. Okay. Yeah, I, I like the original one. The Escuro is really good too. So would it be funny now, Chris, if you get a chance to smoke the white band, the Escuro, smoke that one and see which one you prefer. What can you recommend in terms of mild cigars? Uh, what's your budget, LOL, for, forever? Because this is a mild cigar and this is good, but it's also $15, so I don't know if I would recommend it to everybody. Uh, CLE Connecticut, Padermo Champagne, uh, Oliva V, Quite a few of them out there. It's Miguel from Bakersfield, gentlemen. His favorite cigar is the Sacred Scales. Yeah, that, I heard them talking about this, so I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna, and then you mentioned it too, so I'm gonna have to check it out. Uh, props to you, are for doing these live chats. No one in the cigar game is doing it that I know of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said, you got a couple of a couple of guys that are doing a lot of live shows with sponsors and stuff like that. And uh, well, Vic, Vic and uh, Caesar and Rob don't have sponsors. I don't believe. I'm sure that'll be coming. Now that show is really good, but. Uh, yeah, I, I like doing these because, like I said, it's like I'm not I'm not putting a video out today, so it's good. Some people like want to know what I got going on today, so this is very uh, good, easy way for me to do that. I don't have to do any editing, and I get to talk to all you guys like we're doing a live premiere or something like that. And uh, so I enjoy them, man. I enjoy them. Like I said, I'm had a good night's rest, so I'm not tired or anything, and uh, smoking a cigar like I normally would. So this this I'm glad y'all enjoying these. Adam, have you? Which ones have the Kiravari have you tried? I know the Socrates. There's a couple other ones. That, uh, I like the, but, but yeah, like you say, everybody's palate is different. Organized noise. I appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. Eric, what's going on? Good morning. Doing good, man. How you doing? Davidoff Grand Cru is a good mild cigar. Yeah, Davidoff makes good mild cigars. I think for the most part, that they they do do that well. Uh, what cigar have you had that was all flavor and minimal strength? Hmm. Uh, I would jump into like a Luzion, man, or Warped, or uh, uh, Cubans are good too, man. Like, like I said, if you get you a good Cuban, they're gonna have really full flavor, but the strength isn't gonna be there. David, good morning. How you doing? Around ten euros. By the way, I live in Europe, so I'm always referring to you. All right, so ten euros. Uh, let me go back and make sure I didn't not miss chopping up the question. Uh, I would do a I look at look at the Oliva Oliva V series. I, I, let me know what let me know what brands are readily available for you over in Europe, and that'll probably give me a better opinion. Not sure if you've tried the Maestro de Saka Exclusivo, but that is one hell of a cigar. I'd love for you to review it. Uh, I haven't done that. Um, I actually haven't done any Dunbarton Tobacco cigar or Tobacco and Trust cigars on the channel yet. That's about to change. I have my first one. I'm gonna review here shortly, and uh, I like some of his stuff. I don't like all of it. But uh, that's one I tried, though. I, I definitely tried it. So I might even go out today, buy it, and smoke it, and see what I think. I appreciate that, Dave. Yeah, we had, I, thought, I thought that was a really good chat, man. It, it kind of went all over the place, but that's cool. That's kind of like, uh, for me, really genuine and really like honest content. I never try to come up here and pre-plan stuff. It's literally me clicking go live, and then the chat is kind of based off of what you guys want to talk about, what I'm smoking. There's nothing pre-planned. Even in my reviews, I'll glance at the makeup of the cigar right before, but I don't look at reviews before. I don't read anything about the cigars before. I want stuff to be as unrehearsed or, uh, or as uncoursed as possible. I feel like the content comes out way better that way. And I think you could tell when people have done some reading about flavor notes and stuff like that. And to me, that's just kind of distasteful, man. Like, have your own opinion about it. You shouldn't want your... I don't, like, if, if, if 10 people smoke the cigar and have the same notes and I smoke it and get completely different notes, that's fine to me. I don't feel bad about that. Carlos Torano is a good cigar. Wow, you've been smoking a long time, brother. Aladino Maduro is a good, uh, good flavorful cigar with a little strength. Yeah, Aladino line, Aladino line all the all the, across the board except for the Corojo Reserva. I feel like can flicker into that medium to full, but all the other stuff I like. Uh, I did see that, Mister. I did see that review of the Unstalling Valor. I did see that. All Cuban brands, Tatuaje. Smoke you a Tatuaje. I'm gonna tell you one cigar I think of of any of uh, all these lines that I think I recommend. Uh, except the Cubans, you know, you should you know about those Tatuaje. I would do the Black Label. I'm gonna tell you another thing. If well, uh, you're not gonna have that because it's TAA. Uh, yeah, Tatuaje Black Label would be a good one. Ashton BSG. 
Uh, the new Romeo and Julieta, the Reserva Real Nicaragua is fantastic. Trinidad, I don't smoke any Trinidad New World cigars, so I can't tell you that one. Uh, Cohiba, I smoked the Royale in the Connecticut. I thought they were good cigars, but I, I know the price over there we use is going to be higher, too. Like, I just, I can't co-sign that price, man. It roll up, uh, first 20-year, uh, the CLE Connecticut, the first 20-year Colorado, La Flor de la Centillas by my father is a very good, a very good cigar. Um, yeah, try to see if you can find you a Tatawahe Black Label and Petite Lancero or Cazador. Those are the two sizes I would recommend. And see if you can find that brand new Romeo and Julieta Reserva Real Nicaragua and Toro. I smoked it in Robusto. It was okay. The Toro smoked much better. Yeah, David, he is a good dude, man. He's he's a very good dude. We've been tied together since no November-ish. And uh he reached out to me when I, I think I had maybe two or three hundred subs then. And uh he believed in me from that point. He 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 liked what he saw and we got really close, man. He's like a brother now. So very, very good dude. He talks really highly about all y'all over at Discord too, all the time. And he probably mentions you guys once or twice a week. So I appreciate you guys extending that gratitude and and support to me too. Uh, doing good, missed your last live. Glad I can make this, make it here. You know, I was thinking about buying some Tatawahe Mexican Experience Limited. Ever tried it? I think those were good. Those were pretty good cigars. Uh, the TAA exclusive from this year is very good. It's probably going to be in my top ten this year, but still not touching the, the three cigars I think that are top three right now. But it still was very good. Um, Tatawahe does very good in his in the sur in the surrogates line and the La Talier line, the two lines that branch off of. Uh, Tatawahe, I think, are very good. So if you see anything like the surrogates, Animal Cracker, Bone Crusher, that's a little stronger, but the Bone Crusher is good. Then the La Talier line is very good, too. What would be a good first Cuban? Uh, Oya de Monterey Epicure, too. Uh, Cohiba, Siglo 1, Siglo 2. Tr anything Trinidad, those are usually pretty good. Uh, H. Upman Magnum series. The Magnum 46 is a really good cigar. Magnum 50s are good. Tatawahi Skinny Monster Lanceros are damn good too. Yeah, I do like those. DC or D. Crowder, what is going on? What's up, Ron? And Cigar Family, that Romeo and Juliet has in Connecticut. Nick Raw was awesome. You're right about the reserve, but not good. And 6 by 60. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I haven't had the 6x60. Six six. I just, uh, James sent me the Toro and the Robusto. The, the Robusto was good, but that Toro was that sweet spot. Some size is just, they just have that size. Yeah, that, T, that TA 2020 was very good. I, I smoked it. I smoked one and really enjoyed it. Bought one the next day to make sure that I wasn't crazy. And I was like, nope, it is a good cigar. Uh, no, if the prices are higher here, I get a Cohiba Robusto for 25 euros at official retailers what are the prices in america like well you know well you know we, we can't buy them here they don't there are no stores that sell them but um that sounds about right man like if i'm buying if i have to buy a box that sounds about about right i'm, I'm probably gonna be paying anywhere from about 20 to 25 dollars a cigar Kenneth, what's going on good morning brother i am too they did a really good job on that i hate that the rumor that uh Pete Johnson is not going to focus on TAA. He's going to focus more on PCA and fighting legislation against the FDA. So I don't know if this is the last TAA that Pete's going to do. I, I'm not sure. But uh, I hate that, Max. This is a very good cigar. I think this was the best Tatawahe in a long time. If Walt's still in the chat, he's a big Tatawahe fan. I don't think he was as high, as high on it as me. but Or he thinks it's going to – and I think I can agree with him now, agree with him on that. He thinks with some more age it will get better. So that's probably – I probably will end up buying a box of those TAAs. Yeah, Eric, for sure. Yeah. Monte Cristo is good too, Kevin. Number two is a, a classic. Uh, Party gets Serie D. The Serie D line is very good too for the first Cubans. Those will be good. All right, Sydney, I appreciate you pulling in, man. You be good out there. Stay safe. I was about to say I've been smoking a while, but honestly, I probably talked the first 20 minutes, man. Sometimes I get, sometimes I talk too much, man. But uh, cigar is still very good. We 
got it about the trade embargo though. So oh no, no, ain't no big hey, no, yeah, yeah. We got that embargo still. So um like I was telling people here, Monty Fortuna and I have been are two two good sites to get Cubans from. Well, it's nice as hell outside, man. So I uh I think I'm gonna end this chat, man, and kind of go outside and hang out in the sun for a little bit and do some relaxation, man. So but uh, I appreciate all y'all pulling in this early in the morning, man. I'm surprised that this many of you got here. I know some of y'all are working. And uh, so y'all taking the time out to include me in your, what you got going on in your lives, man. So I really appreciate that. And uh, like I said, I'll, I'll be reviewing two Drew Estate cigars today. So y'all be on the lookout for uh, for those reviews coming soon. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. I can see that, Walt. I think that's gonna get better with with time too. I don't think that might that shouldn't be too hard, man. All right, no, you 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 have fun too, man. Take care of your birthday. Let me know what you're smoking, man. Tom, you enjoy your day too. I appreciate all y'all, man. I, uh, I'll catch up with y'all later. Who knows, man? If I'm feeling like it, I may get I may get up here later tonight and see what you guys got going on. So uh, on that note, man, y'all be good. Stay safe, man. I love you guys. I'll talk to y'all later.